Hello everybody, this is your friend Darren Iman, the master of shenanigans, and as promised today I'm going to be drawing my one of my all-time favorite DC anti-heroes. Uh, this would be the main man himself, Lobo. I've got my uh, India ink and brush here. I've got my uh, non-alcoholic beverage markers and whiteouts and I've also taken the time to take a bit of photo reference for this one that is your beautiful friend right there the master of shenanigans himself so without any further ado let's get started Okay, we got our stopwatch, 10 minutes, here we go. Now um, I'm just going to go in directly with the um, inks on this one and I'm doing this specifically because I have the reference. So um, this is still the wrong way to do it by the way. Um, even if you can draw from reference without making uh, any really heavy mistakes uh, it's still better to uh, to go in with the uh, pencils first specifically because it's always this is the wrong way that I'm doing it right now is what I'm trying to say it's always better to sketch something in roughly and you'll notice that I'm not doing that I'm actually taking my time and going in with some detail which is the opposite of what I'm supposed to be doing uh, the reason that I'm doing this is specifically just because of the time, the time constraints. I've been uh, drawing from life for so many years now that I'm, I'm pretty confident that I can just go in directly with the ink and do things um, faster. This way, yes. But uh, still the wrong way. Although, you know what, now that I think about it, just hearing my own voice. If you want to do things the wrong way, I say go for it. Now, there is going to be an argument here as to whether or not um, there is a wrong way in drawing. Let's say, semantics aside, there is always a better way, a more effective way. However, I do encourage breaking the rules. Nevertheless, how are you going to break the rules or even know that you're breaking the rules if you don't learn them first, right? Okay, big smirk here. So as you saw, this is going to be based on my face. However, let's give me some fangs here. Let's do that. I can't tell you how many times in life my situation would have been much improved if I had fangs. Okay, now Lobo doesn't have eyebrows, but I put these massive creases in here specifically because when I draw the Lobo kind of markings here, um, I'm going to conform to those shapes and it will still read the expression correctly um, without you know, it, it, it's kind of a cheat. It'll st what I'm trying to say is it'll still give the expression that these elevated eyebrows would give, these creased eyebrows would give, without actually giving him eyebrows. Okay, and then he has, uh, well, let's finish here with the creases. And then he has these things here. And again, we're going to have these kind of conform. It's almost like a mustache, but it's not. Neither is it a tattoo, it's just these markings that he has, and they will conform with the existing lines. And uh, we're going to need a light source here, which I don't have, so I'll just fake it and say that the light's coming from the top left. Okay, 
really pronounce these creases here. And uh, <clears throat> kind of take advantage of the fact that I've got a bit more time now, uh, simply because I'm skipping the, the pencil stage. So I'm going to go ahead and add some more detail than I normally would on a quick draw. Okay, give a bit bigger of a chin to Lobo here than I have on my photo reference here. Why? Um, a, because my chin implants are not covered by uh, my Canadian healthcare. Or B, because a superhero just looks cooler, or a comic book character. I wouldn't go so far as to call Lobo a superhero. Just looks cooler with a massive chin. Think of Superman. Big chin, neck as thick as a paint can. Okay, so this is starting to look all right here. And now we're going to have his neck. And big kind of neck muscles. Again, we're going to come in with the shadow. Retreating from the light, so the shadow is going to be hanging out on the right side. A little bit of an Adam's apple here. So cheekbones, which I don't actually have because my face right now is too fat. Why? Because the gym has been closed due to coronavirus. And I do believe, although I'm back now, so... Time to take off all this coronavirus weight that I put on. And Lobo does have giant Wolverine type uh, sideburns. In fact, so does Hellboy, the last character that I drew. And I think it stands to reason that Wolverine has Wolverine sideburns. Man, I, these are all characters that I've been drawing. So I guess I've just revealed that even unbeknownst to me, I have a secret sideburn fetish. Okay, um, I'm going to do here is the same thing that I did on the Hellboy sketch because he wears a trench coat. Let's use this as a framing device. Frame the entire image. And here we're going to have to come in with the white out. Oh my god, we're at almost seven minutes already. Hey, I did take a little too much time uh, playing around with all of these details, although I'm not too concerned because I know that the rest I'm going to do with a brush, which of course can be done rather quickly. Okay, let's start with that right away. Now Lobo generally has um, Dreadlocks, but not like Bob Marley dreadlocks, more like Rob Zombie dreadlocks. Although what I'm going to do here is, um, I wish I had a lot of time to really kind of draw the hair with uh, lots of detail and get those crazy dreads in there, but, um, but I'm just not going to in a 10 minute sketch, specifically because we're almost at 8 minutes. So maybe I'll just put in a couple of my outlines just to show that, you know, there's some kind of texture in the hair. It's not just a big mop of black. Okay. And let's uh, do a bit of dry brushing in here. First, let's lay down some blacks in the leather. And what this is doing is it's actually taking the ink off my brush. And once I'm satisfied that there's not a lot of ink on here, then I'm going to do some dry brushing, which kind of creates texture that one would expect to find in, uh, in something like leather, right? And then give a little bit of weight to him, as always, by adding some shadow near the bottom. This weighs it down. But not just willy-nilly, like I still have to keep 
in mind where the light source is coming from. Just look at this, I've been dipping into the ink and it's left little speckles all over the place. That's okay, it gives it character, right? Increase the hair thickness a bit. Okay, and we did say that I'd add a couple of streaks of white out, although he's got too much of a forehead here. Oh yeah, there we go. That kind of shows that he's got a dread coming down. So let's go ahead and add just a couple of, show that there's like some texture in here. So not too much. Let's wipe that down a bit. And what are we at? We are at um, 9.36. Just a little wee bit of time to add some more hatching in here. Little areas that uh, I figure still need a bit of work. Maybe have some straggly hair to show that it's not combed in a while. And what are we at? Stop. There we go. Nine. 58 worked out perfectly. Now in the last few videos, if you've been following my channel, you'll notice that I have fallen into a bad habit of stopping the clock. And then as I'm chatting, I kind of noodle with it a bit more, which uh, is cheating because it's supposed to be done in 10 minutes or less, not 10 minutes and 10, 15 seconds less. So right away I'm looking at it, there's some things that I would change, but uh, I'm not going to do that because Let's not cheat any more than we have to. So uh, this one has been a lot of fun. Lobo, the main man, he who, <laughs> his name actually stands for, he who devours your entrails and thoroughly enjoys it. If you've never read a Lobo comic, it is silly, fun, pure chaos. Read anything by Keith Giffen and Simon Bisley. I highly, highly, highly recommend it. And as always, please remember to like and subscribe. And uh, also leave a comment as to who you would like me to draw next. If it's a character that I know, um, chances are that's what I'm going to do. We'll see you next time.